So this is uh, June 22nd meeting of the Board of Water Works, Works Trustees. It's 3.30 and we are in person for the first time since February, I believe, of 2020. And I would just like to say I think that um, we all learned a lot about ourselves and each other during the last many months. And I, for one, I don't say I was, I learned it, but I was reminded of what a remarkable staff we had at Warren Waterworks. Um, we went through some difficult times. I mean, we had people living in trailers. We had uh, a lot of scary times. We had people that had COVID and family members that had COVID. And all through that, um, through how resilient this organization is and the people that work here are. And if I haven't said it enough, and I know my fellow board members feel the same way, I am proud to be a part of this organization. And getting through COVID, um, just proves part of the reason why. So I'm glad, and I'm glad to be back in person. Uh, we're missing Andrea. She is on a vacation today and also COVID related. It was one she had planned to take, uh -huh. I think, in December, and this is a makeup, so we wish her well. Um, all right, so this is the June 22nd meeting. I have a consent agenda, which includes minutes of the May 25th Board of Waterworks Trustees meeting, minutes of the June 1st Planning Committee meeting, minutes of the June 1st Customer Relations Committee meeting. Minutes of the June 8th uh, Finance and Audit Committee meeting, uh, financial statements, list of payments for May 2021, summary of CEO approved expenditures in excess of $20,000, and the next meeting date of July 27th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. And a second? Second. second. And you, anything to comment on before we move on this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing to pull out, Graham, unless there are questions. Any comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Very good. Uh, this is part of our meeting for public comments. I don't, is there anyone here in the audience? I don't see anybody here. Do um, we have anybody online on the Zoom that wants to speak? No. I should say, if everybody's watching a recording of this, we are. Going to continue with Zoom meetings, uh, both for these in-person board meetings, so that people can tune in and uh, participate, and then our committee meetings will probably are going to resume on Zoom uh, because we found that it can be to me. So, um, moving on, the first item, uh, item three A, is the um, audit 2020 audit reports. I'm not sure how you'd like to proceed that. You know, Graham, I think I'll just touch on the fact that uh, our consultant, uh, Kristen Hughes from RMS, or RSM, I'm sorry, RSM um, US, did uh, present the audit reports for both the utility and the pension at the Finance and Audit Committee this month. Um, the, both uh, were received an unqualified or clean opinion. Um, today, we are considering or asking the board to receive the file of the utility audit statements, the, the pension of the next month when we have the pension board meeting. But um, unless there are questions about uh, the audit, we would just ask that the board receive and file this uh, unqualified <coughs> clean opinion audit. So I'm looking for a motion to receive and file the 2020 financial audit reports and distribute 
reports to the appropriate agencies. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. A second. Any comments or questions about the audit report? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Okay, so item 3B, this is the city, let me open that. I have so many over here, there we go. This is the city of Des Moines, easements for Des Moines River Lease Alterations Phase B. Uh, this is a public hearing, um, so I will open the public hearing and ask for any comments from the public concerning the project's form of contract plans and specifications. Is there anyone here to speak on this item? Actually, this would be the form of easement, so the public is moving the contract. Okay. Right on the back side of there. See, Ted had to I blame it on Ted. <laughs> No, I got you. So let me say, this is a public hearing for comments of public concerning the granting of an easement, which would be appropriate. So is there anybody here that would like to speak on this item? Uh, seeing none, um, we have, have we received any comments from the public? We have, we have not. All right. And so I will close the public hearing. And I am seeking a motion to authorize the chair, chairperson and CEO and general manager to execute the documents granting easements to the city of Des Moines for the Des Moines Re River levee alterations phase B project. Is there a motion to that? So moved. And a second. Second. Any comments, questions, anything you'd like to add to? No, Graham, I would just add that there are actually three easements here. There's one that is just simply for access to the site. One is uh, for temporary construction <coughs> space that they will use just during the construction of these improvements and then it will no longer be an easement. And then one, um, another permanent easement for the actual construction or improvements. All of these are along uh, the Rackham River, um, north of the river in fact, where Des Moines Water Works on is just a very small strip of ground. Uh, no concerns on our part in the existence. Right, so we have a motion second. Any other comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Uh, and then that motion passes. Moving us to item 3C. And 3C is Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation Forbearance Agreements. I think I'll have you explain these before I get the motion. So. Sure. Thanks, Graham. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of to a, a milestone here on the Park Foundation uh, Park Improvements Project after almost five years of planning and, and construction and, and a couple of years of operation um, through four separate agreements that we've had with the Park Foundation. More than $7 million in investment. We, we're at the point now where we really want to kind of wrap up the construction phase of this project and, and, and close that out. We also want to uh, make a little bit of an amendment in the operational agreement and the way that we build the park foundation for our operation and maintenance of the facility. And then we want to touch on, uh, also touch on uh, the depreciation fund that was intended to be created by the park foundation. First of all, um, after working through all of these years of construction and our administration of that construction as a waterworks project, we've come to the conclusion, we accepted the $7 million project was completed by Hinkle some time ago, and we have uh, a little bit of an amendment that we want to make, a second amendment to the construction 28E uh, that will, um, actually the total financial outcome is about a $60,000 credit back to the foundation um, after all the kind of gives and takes throughout the this couple of years of construction just to reconcile um, our administrative costs and make sure that everybody on both sides was treated fairly. We were very careful to ensure throughout this process that our ratepayers were not paying um, any of those costs. And we may have been a little too careful and charged some time that we think probably shouldn't have been charged and we're going to reconcile that. That's what um, the Second Amendment to the Construction 28 is all about. The document is in the packet. The, the second document is a first amendment to the O&M 28 e The O&M 28 e is the document which governs how we do maintenance and operation of those facilities and how the Park Foundation pays us for those. Initially, we were, we were very careful to ensure, again, that uh, ratepayers were not paying any of those costs and that there was going to be um, full coverage of, of our expenses there. Um, 
we set that up as a monthly payment that was the same every month throughout the year and then there was a reconciliation process at the end of the year to kind of balance that out we found through two years of operation that that's actually very complex um, they ended up overpaying us in each of the first two years quite a bit and then we had to refund those those dollars so what we would like to do is, is change that process to just an actual cost where we will determine our actual cost each month bill those to the foundation and they will pay us that's the first component of the uh, uh, first amendment to the o m twenty. the second component is um, a delay in the initiation of the uh, depreciation fund and you will remember that an important part of our agreement with the park foundation was that they would contribute to a depreciation fund for ongoing maintenance and repair of the facilities that was certainly their intention, but as we all know, um, their season last year was completely canceled because of the pandemic. They just were not in a financial position uh, to make those contributions and to start that process. And what we have proposed and what's in the, is in the agreement and what they think that they will be able to do financially is begin that process in 2022. Um, same schedule, just it's delayed for two years, and that schedule is, is in the document like to look at it. Uh, it's just a financial consideration because of the impacts of the pandemic. So those are the two maybe, amendments. Uh, there may be a couple of questions and comments on that. Before I take those, I'll get a motion to approve uh, and authorize the chairperson and CEO and general manager to execute both the second amendment and acknowledgement of expiration of term of 28E agreement for construction of phase one and park improvements in the first amendment to 28E agreement for operation and, ma and maintenance of phase one park improvements. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. Second. Are there any comments or questions on this? Ted, I wasn't able to attend the Park Foundation, their most recent meeting. Do you know if they went ahead and um, consented to this agreement or an issue the previous month? That's my understanding, but I'll ask Mike to. They did indeed act on that in, in favor of signing the uh, That's great. Any other comments or questions? You know, it occurs to me, Sue and I have historical knowledge because we were here kind of from the beginning you know, through now, and um, I know it was very important to this board when we um, created the agreement with the foundation to do exactly what's happened here, and that is that the foundation would help kind of set the vision and um, obviously raise money for these important projects but um, the depreciation part of it the, the upkeep part of it is very important and i and i support these um, these amendments because it keeps in the spirit of what we're doing i realize there were some unforeseen sort of circumstances but um, you know i'm i'm pleased that, that we're continuing to do that and i know and it's in the notes here that um, as we look at a couple of projects, one being you know, the possible so memorial project, we would follow the exact same, any future project under the same scenario. That we would not only raise money for the project, but raise money for depreciation and upkeep uh, going forward. It's, it's a great model and one that, you know, whether we have people that want to do things at Mafford Lake or to do it here is one that you know, I think has proven to work. And so, um, um, obviously, we always have to keep an eye on it. So we have to change it like right. a little bit here. But I think that thanks to Mike's work and a lot of people who put on a lot of time on this staff and then the foundation staff, it's worked well. So anything else on this item? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And those opposed? Hearing none. That motion passes. Item three D. This is the transfer of water main in. Uh, Scott Street to Kemet Industries. Um, I'm seeking a motion to approve the bill of sale to Kemet Industries. Well, maybe I'll have you explain this first. Absolutely, Graham. The, this is uh, our intent here is to transfer about 170 feet of existing water main to Kemet. This existing water main is um, a piece that lies in Scott Street and it's east of East 20th, I believe. 
Southeast 20th Street, it's just to the east there. And if you've been out there, um, Kennan has actually taken over the right of ways, and those right of ways have been vacated uh, to their purpose. And both Scott Street to the east of 20th and 20th Street to the north of Scott are actually gated off. They're part of their facility now. And so we don't have access to this water main anymore, should it leak or should it need any kind of maintenance. Um, in these kind of cases, which we've had before in a number of situations, there are a number of them on Drake University's campus, as an example. Um, we determine, or typically the board has determined it's in the best interest to just transfer ownership of, of those facilities to the property. And so that's what we intend to do here. That, that main only serves Kennan Industries. It's on their property behind a gate. It's most effective to just transfer those facilities. Excellent. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the bill of sale to Kennan Industries and authorize the chairperson and CEO and general manager to execute the bill of sale. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. The motion is second. Any comments or questions about this motion? I just, you know, as you drive by and you see what Kennan has done in that area and the improvement of MLK, it is such an asset. And I remember when they were talking to the city about they had to have access or they might be leaving our city. So um, it's just really nice to see all the improvements that they've done there. I agree. I agree. Anything else? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 And those opposed? Hear that. So motion has passed. We're going to item 3E. This is a request authorization for the CEO and general manager to execute professional service agreement with OPM Architects for Architectural and Engineering Services for Grounds Maintenance Facility. Ted, why don't you explain this one? Sure, Graham. Uh, I think the, the board is well aware that our current grounds maintenance facility is just outside the levee, on the wet side of the levee. It's flooded numerous times. The barn that was there adjacent to the ground shop has been torn down because the flooding had caused structural damage there and it was no longer a viable building. But unfortunately, removing that space has really cramped the grounds folks. Um, that, given their, their cramped quarters and the fact that that facility regularly floods, uh, we think it's in uh, our best interest to move those folks to the dry side of the lake. You'll remember that we made arrangements with the city of Des Moines to acquire a piece of property on the south side of George Flag just to the west of the winery and it's our intention to um, develop a new grounds facility on that site. Um, this uh, is the, the beginning phase, the first phase of that where we've requested proposals from architectural firms to do the uh, design and construction services and all likelihood for that facility. So this was uh, an RFP for professional services so I'm seeking a motion to authorize staff to execute a professional services agreement with OPN architects in the amount of ninety eight thousand seven hundred dollars for architectural and engineering services for ground maintenance facility as Ted described and is there a motion to that effect so moved in a second second any questions or comments on this we just have a little bit of an explanation, um, not that there's a big delta in the price difference, but mm -hmm. um, obviously the evaluation tipped it more toward OPM, and I think it'd be worth uh, if someone could note the reasons for that, just so we have it for the record. Yeah, um, I think that's a, a great observation, Sue, and I'll ask Mike to, to um, shore this up for me, but um, when we do professional services contracts, we, we don't always go below bid. We typically have a decision matrix in advance. And we um, like to consider um, previous experience, firm experience, individual experience, qualifications, things like that, to ensure that we get um, a professional service agreement with someone who is uh, well-versed in exactly what it is that we're trying to do here. You see the similar project experience is really what made the difference in this case. Is they've done a lot of similar buildings. And uh, for you know, twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand dollars on a project this size, we thought that that uh, depth of experience was really uh, worth for that little bit of difference. Mike, I'll let you comment on whether the team thought there were other. That was the key. That was the key item. Uh, OPN. All of them were capable, but OPN clearly had done more similar. Uh, 
facilities. And so if you look at the scoring on you know similar project experience, that's where the that's kind of where they nosed ahead, if you will, in regard to how we evaluated. Uh, it was nice to have three qualified proposers, but again, we feel like this one's in our best interest. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, especially if anyone is listening and they see the bottom line. Um, I think it's that value add, which is so important to us, so thanks. Uh, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Moving to item 3F, uh, this is request authorization to solicit bids for the 2021 well rehabilitation and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of the July 2021 board meeting. Ted? Graham, we have uh, a number of radio collector wells. Both the McMullen Sailorville plant use radio collector wells, shallow groundwater, as their primary source. And um, there are six wells at the McMullen plant, there are two larger wells at the Sailorville plant. Um, best practice and our experience, frankly, dictates that those wells should be rehabilitated periodically uh, to remove um, materials that, that tend to plug the screens. Most of that is you know, iron roof bacteria, um, calcification, just the, the well screens will become plugged and the capacity of the wells actually reduces. And so in our experience, every two to five <coughs> years, depending on the specifics of the well, we need to get out and, and rehabilitate those. Um, staff has identified well six at Maffitt and well one at Sailorville as um, two wells that we'd like to rehabilitate this year. This is becoming a, basically an, an annual process for us where we need to rehabilitate a couple of wells to make sure we maintain capacity with all our source of source plants. So um, well six at Maffitt, McMullen plant, and, and well one at Sailorville have been identified for this year, and we would ask permission to do that. So I'm seeking a motion to authorize staff to solicit bids for the 2021 well rehabilitation and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of July 2021 board meeting and direct staff to publish notice as provided by law. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. Motion of a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Motion passes. Item 3G, request authorization to solicit bids for the Southeast Polk, Northeast Morgan Drive meter vault and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of July 2021 board meeting. Is that? And there's an area in uh, Northeast Polk County that is uh, growing kind of a little bit short on supply from a water perspective. Uh, staff has determined the best way to Provide additional capacity in that area is actually to pass water through the, the bond grant system, the city bond grant system. Um, they have uh, worked with the city um, to approve that conceptually, and we, what we need to do now is install a connection to their system and, and a meter pit and then some limited piping to provide additional capacity in that area. And this is uh, requesting permission to bid. For that project. So I'm seeking a motion to authorize staff to solicit bids for Southeast Polk, uh, Northeast Morgan Drive meter vault and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of July 2021 board meeting and direct staff to publish notice as provided by law. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. Motion to second. And any comments or questions? Again, just another that's growing so much. I drove through that Bond Grant area over the weekend and my gosh, I was thinking about, you know, what we've done with Southeast Polk and huge growth potential out in that area. It is, it's amazing. Uh, any other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? All right, that item passes. 3H is a uh, request authorization to solicit bids for LP Moon pumping station sodium hypochlorite feed modifications and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of the August 2021 board meeting. Okay. Uh, sodium hypochlorite is a disinfectant that we use to ensure that 
water stays safe and clean as it travels through the distribution system. Uh, this particular case, uh, we have our LP moon pumping station on the same site. Xenia had a pumping station. And Xenia actually sold some of the capacity within that station to Waukee. Uh, Waukee uh, wanted to use that uh, capacity to provide for their, some of their growth. And they wanted us to manage that facility and ensure that the appropriate disinfection is applied and all those things. So we have worked with them now that they've acquired that capacity, we've worked with them to, uh, we came to an agreement where they would pay for some enhancements in their chlorine feed system, their sodium hypochlorite feed system at the LP Marine facility to ensure that the water that's being delivered to them from the Xenia pump station is uh, properly disinfected. So we are going to bid this contract. We are going to um, cause those improvements to be made, and Waukee is going to reimburse us the full cost for that work. So right now, we're just asking permission to bid the work, which Waukee will reimburse us for. All right, so I'm seeing a motion to authorize the staff to solicit bids for LP Moon pumping station sodium hypochlorite feed modifications and establish the date of the public hearing as the date of the August 2021 board meeting and direct staff to publish notice as provided by law. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions about this project? I think that I think that the item is incorrect on the agenda. Say July 2021. The motion was for August. Um, I assume we want it in August, Michael, according to the... Just a grin on my face, confirm August. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Confirms August. Yeah. Yeah. August. So the motion was appropriate. It was read for August. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And those opposed? I request authorization for CEO and general manager to execute Amendment 4 to joint funding agreement with the U.S. Geological Survey for Des Moines River Well Field Evaluation. Okay. Graham, this is a, a continuation of our efforts to develop a, a, a better raw water source uh, well field along the Des Moines River, which will be more protected from things like nitrate and cyanobacteria. We initially entered into this agreement with USGS some number of years ago for that specific purpose to provide water supply to the drive plant. Uh, more recently, you will recall that we, we expanded this effort to look um, for raw water supply for expansion of the saline treatment plant. That came to the board very recently as, as an amendment. And this fourth amendment is, uh, in addition to that, coordination of some pump testing and specific identification of sites to get us really prepared for uh, future expansion of not only our, our raw water source for the Cooler Drive plant, but raw water for a 10 or 25 million gallon expansion at the Sailor Water Treatment Plant. So um, this is just one more step, presumably the last step that will give us all of the data that we need to uh, have it all coordinated by USGS as one package. All right, so the agreement number will be fun here. So I'm looking for a motion to authorize the CEO and general manager to execute Amendment 4 to the Joint Funding Agreement number 18EMNE0000000134 in the amount of $131,000 and $131,300. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second. Second. Any comments or questions on this? I don't know. It occurs to me that of all of the items on our agenda, this one more than anyone uh, shows why we're pursuing regionalization. I mean, as we look to you know, at, at, at our capacity and how we're going to service this region, I mean, this this type of exploration and potential spending of dollars. Maybe I'm saying that is, but it really occurs to me that that's 
that's why we spent so much time over the last couple of years on regionalization of an item just like this. It's exactly right. It's clearly a regional initiative. It's a regional project. And you serve the entire region. Great. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? No hearing. You know, I find it's amazing that if I were to know that all it took to have a half an hour meeting was to meet in person <laughs> as opposed to over Zoom, I think they would have been you know, um, aside. So uh, that completes the action items. We have information items starting with the planning committee. Uh, planning is, I'm fine, it's not. Oh, you're fine, Andrea, but then you have nothing to report. Yeah, nothing to report. Um, Andrea was That's right. in attendance, and I can, I can teach it there if you like. Right. Um, we had uh, two topics at the planning committee meeting this month. Um, urban deer management, uh, the, the resumption of, of urban deer hunting in Waterworks Park. The outcome of that discussion was that staff would bring a proposal to the board later this year on just exactly what we thought was appropriate in terms of urban deer management and waterworks park. And then we also had a presentation on the uh, Sailorville Water Treatment Plant expansion RFP, which uh, we have issued an RFP to uh, consider two options for expansion of the Sailorville Water Treatment Seeing you were asleep during the planning committee, <laughs> finance and audit, I imagine has, it was the audit that we approved here. Out of the Indeed, we did. We had a couple big topics in finance and audit, including a review of the audit report, which Ted discussed here. Um, uh, some discussion of legal services review, which the um, staff is going to move ahead with uh, developing some criteria, some selection criteria, and bringing those to the board, or perhaps the committee. I'll recall, Ted might correct me, uh, I think in July, and then uh, some further steps moving forward from there. Um, and then third, uh, we, uh, Ted discussed um, the Secretary of Agriculture's visit to the plant. Yes, sir. Uh, I imagine, Ted, that all of those who uh, responded to the RFP for legal services have been updated on what our timeline is. I don't know that they have. I don't know if you want to, I just... We will, uh, we have not yet opened them. Oh, okay. Pending the support for the evaluation matrix. Okay. But I definitely will once we open them and know who to I mean, at some point, I probably just want to let them know that our time so they know that we're yeah. moving forward, but maybe moving forward. So they put it time like this. And it was a good list of local firms. Nice. My nice. Now, Customer Relations Committee, so you may talk about that, but then we also should talk about the meeting that was held last week with... I think that was probably the main thing we'd want to report out. Um, I thought it was an excellent meeting. Uh, this was for anyone who has been involved at all or has an interest in being involved in the new regionalization discussion. So many of the suburban communities were on. It was presented by the GM CEOs of the three water utilities, being Urbandale, Les Des Moines, and Des Moines. And I think it's a, it's a perfect time to say, you know, we kind of wrapped it up, put a bow on it, and laid it out there for everyone to respond to now. Um, but when I think back, and I was just looking around the room of all the people that have been involved in this, in addition to the board, Laura, I mean, early on our seven o'clock meetings in Urbandale and keeping our website updated and making sure that every note was listed. Um, Michelle kept us all on track and made sure that everybody was invited. Jen tried to, I say tried to, reel us in on those Wednesday morning meetings and create what we would want to share out and what we would not want to share in the minutes. Um, and then just a huge asset, um, Amy, um, the financial analysis that you've been able to do for us and being able to turn around and really present our opinion of what is best for Waterworks back to the board. You've just done an amazing job. Um, and Ted, I've heard so many compliments from the regional leaders about your presentation. So 
since that time, as well as uh, Christina at West Des Moines and Dale at Urbandale. So um, I think we just, we did a great job of bringing it together here at the end of June, laid out a timeline for a follow-up, and we are all, uh, we made it very clear that we have decisions we have to make, and so we are asking the other communities to move as quickly as they can and letting us know if they want to be part of this. But Ted and Amy, Laura, Jen, thank you, Michelle, thank you so much. Ted, why don't you just, um, for those who are here and those who are tuning in, um, give an idea of what you think the next steps and timing are going to be here. Which, how going to we're talking about reconciliation? Sure. Well, um, we've, as everyone knows, brought our discussions to conclusion with what we're calling the microgroup, the representatives from the board <coughs> of utilities. And those discussions came to a conclusion with a small number of what I would call open eye contrasting. Um, we also, uh, at near the end of that discussion, came to um, the realization that some of our suburban wholesale customers wanted asset transfer to be a certainty instead of an option. And so near the end of that timeline, we made a proposal to them from a financial perspective that we thought was much simpler based on the fact that we didn't have to um, have a, a financial model that allowed for asset transfer or not and, and provided greater return to our customers regardless of, of which way. We could settle that up, up front we shared that with uh, West Des Moines and Urbanville fairly recently. Um, we, as Des Moines Waterworks, um, I specifically have shared with them fairly recently um, uh, sort of a, a final proposal that I think I would be willing to recommend to this board as a place that we could land if they are in support of that. A piece of that was the revised financial model as the basis. They're in the process of evaluating that financial model uh, as recently as Friday of last week. Um, FCS, Jason Mum with FCS, met with uh, the financial consultant who's working with West Point Riverdale to answer some questions. And I mean, Amy and I visited about that today, in fact, and think that that was a good discussion and, and they're moving that forward. So right now, <clears throat> it's up to West Des Moines and Urbandale to respond to the, what I shared with them about a position that I think we would be willing to take, or a position I would be willing to share with our board, I guess. They understand that our board has approved it. It's not final, but it's something that I would be willing to recommend to this board as the path for <coughs> regionalization. Um, I think the next step is, is for them to get back to us. I think there's likely to be a little bit of discussion there. But then once we get to a point where that, that group agrees, uh, it, it will be time to begin sharing information suburban wholesale customers, the public, the, um, the, the groups of, uh, you know, the, the stakeholders of interest here about what we're considering doing. And I would hope that that could happen this summer, that we would get to the point where we can do that. So you think, it, is it um, possible that we might have, this board might have a, a meeting in July to hear your recommendations? So, so that would mean that that group would have responded to you and, and you would have your recommendation. Is July, what you're thinking? I'm, I'm hopeful for that. I think that's certainly a possibility. Um, I will tell you this process has always taken longer than I expected. But, um, but you know, this summer, Amy, I don't know if you would, if you totally disagree with that, you can share. But no, I don't totally disagree. I, I think there's a recognition, really, from all parties that we need to make a decision and we need to keep moving this forward. So, I think um, all the parties are really working towards that end. So, Senate and Board, uh, so I'll make sure I understand this right. So, what would happen is, obviously you'll keep having your discussions, they're gonna give you feedback, you're then gonna to put together what you're gonna to propose to this board. This board will meet uh, to discuss those and make some decisions about what that 2080 would look like, and then that goes into that process you were talking about, and then we go out and start communicating. Right, Is right. that correct? That's correct. Uh, is everybody? I feel pretty strongly that we have to have the fundamentals aligned before we start telling people what we're proposing. Right. Okay. 
And so, um, you know, the, the documents are public, uh, things that have been published, but in terms of actually doing outreach, I think we'll get to the point where we think we have a foundation in place. This board supports that. Uh, I vote. Perfect. And then we will be ready to start more active communication. Exciting that the point where we can take a vote on something of this is in, in sight. So, I think it is. I, I won't promise July, but hopefully. August is inside as well. <laughs> Fair enough. So, thank you. Well said by Sue and her remarks about all the hard work Ted and his staff have done. It's really been a, it's taken a village, I will say. Uh, there's been a lot of great work on the board. Too. You know, I'm not known necessarily the most patient person. And, um, <laughs> Don't you laugh too loud. But um, you know, this process has taken a lot of patience on a lot of people's part. And again, I'm not patting ourselves or anybody else in the back yet, because we're far from done. But um, I am more optimistic that we are gonna have a proposal that's on the table that is reasonable and hopefully acceptable to the communities in this region. So I agree. And that's that's just because of what Joel said, it's taken a lot of people to to do that. So. Green. Okay. Can I put Diane on the spot too? Because I thought the way she wrapped up the meeting, we went from talking about regionalization to then talking about um, the shortage of water. And Diane, if we can put you on the spot, I thought you did a nice job of summarizing why these two are tied together so well. I hope I can remember. Oh, you did. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I just said that there was, I mean, obviously that second had been added because we the drought the drought because of the situation that we were in mm -hmm. with um, the river and I would assume are still in I know you give us an update yeah I will but yes it, we're um, still in the, same the relationship between those two things and looking ahead at really unprecedented change that's happening and the hope that we and go um, as a region to meet these challenges going forward and, and how that's something that that I'm hopeful with all this work that all of us will be able to be a part and that we won't have people splintering off and, and competing for resources and doing that kind of thing and, and um, just feel strongly that that would be important to the health of the metro area. Anything else on customer relations regionalization? Um, I'll address these two together. The Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden Board and the Bill Show Memorial Committee. The Botanical Garden, as I, I've told you in past meetings, has a new CEO and general manager, Kim Perez. She's hit the ground running pretty hard over there. Um, the Botanical Garden Board had a meeting last week. Um, they turned together last week, I believe, Thursday. Um, and she kind of gave her 100, 100 day goals. Um, our agreement, um, meaning Des Moines Water Works and the Nano Garden Board, were discussed as part of that and then also individually as a board item. Um, with Ted's help, we, and you're aware of this, but Ted and I started having conversations with the Nano Garden before the pandemic. Uh, and like many things, uh, we're slowed down, but we kept having those conversations. Um, our 10-year agreement, again, Des Moines Water Works Botanical Garden Agreement, 10-year agree agreement expires at the end of this year. And what Ted and I wanted to, when we started those discussions, um, begin the, the garden planning um, so that they understood that we weren't going to extend that 10-year agreement forever. It was going to change. And what we sought was some sort of a ramping down of our commitment. Um, we have made we being Ted have made a proposal to the town garden um, and we're working on that and I hope we'll have something to bring back to board pretty quickly. Um, I can say with confidence that because the budget of the town garden was discussed at our meeting, they understand that, that the, our financial commitment is going to start decreasing in what is their fiscal year starting July 1. So they understand that that ramping is going to start. Uh, and so the message being delivered over there, and you may have a question. 
Yeah, I do. Please. I do. And it's not on the financial piece of it because I thank you for doing that. And, sure. And things are beautiful there. They really are. Um, but my question was the other piece of the agreement, as I understood it, was that they would do some education. Okay, I was going to get to that. Okay. Okay. Thanks for raising that because that's a key point, yeah. right? And. Um, under the original 10-year agreement was an educational piece that has never been followed through upon. And I think there's, I think we all agree, uh, there's great value in that education component. And I would imagine that uh, Jen, when she gives her, her report, she may touch on this a little, but um, she spent a lot of time over there kind of working on what the vision of that education component can be. And there, this is, for me, and I think, you know, I'll get some guys, uh, even with a ramping down, I wouldn't want to go with a ramping down if you didn't have that educational component. That is the one thing. So we're playing a little bit of catch up on the 10-year agreement, but also on, on going forward. And there's some really innovative ideas about having an educational component. The garden has taken over management of the Asian garden along the river. And, and some of the beautification you said, you have been down there, the new walkways and stuff, that's been done by the town garden. Uh, think about having an educational component that actually starts the Asian garden along the bike trail with some signage that winds up and goes into the, the park itself. Um, there's really a great opportunity there that would be, you know, that we could own. And um, and then I'll, I'll let you follow up with your question if that's if you want more on that, Diane. But the reason I wanted to really put this together with the uh, Bill So Memorial Committee meeting is I get really excited about that education component there because thanks to Jen's work and the works of the town garden, we're going to start to put together a really interesting educational program then that could continue over to what we're proposing in the Bill Stroll Stowe Memorial in a couple of folds. Right one, there could be a, a physical piece outside um, that mirrors what's happening over at the garden. Uh, the Bill Stowe Memorial Project uh, the third partner there is going to be the Science Center, and they're going to help us develop curriculum and, and other pieces of the education component. So what they could then also have at the Science Center is a water education component that's a permanent feature of the Science Center. So really think about how great that could be, that you can have this outdoor thing at the town garden, you have an outdoor thing here at the, at the, at the uh, park, and then something that's curated and also uh, for a permanent part of the uh, Science Center. And so I get Sorry, I, I get very excited about that piece. Does that answer your question? Yeah, my question was about the not just the financial piece, but the education piece. And I think maybe going forward, I mean, this is really interesting, these interrelated education opportunities. And maybe for our, our board committees, we need to look at collapsing yes. some of that into yep. some kind of overriding thing. I <coughs> you know, see that half of our committees relate to these kind of interesting yep. education opportunities. I like that idea. And one thing I, I failed to, to mention before about this, you know, part of the Bill Stowe Memorial thing that we're working on is a, an ongoing piece that would um, support the Citizens Water Academy so that uh, as we go out and, and raise money, we're not raising money just for uh, a physical structure, but it's actually uh, the goal would be to raise money in, a, in some sort of an endowment that would support the out, the activities of the Citizens Water Academy. Again, to your point, making sure that we coordinate that through all that we're doing here, and um, also it could be a great opportunity for successful in fundraising. Not only are you maintaining that curriculum, if you will, for students and, and uh, people that come to the parks and the, the town garden but the possibility of having some sort of an annual speaker or something that is part of the Citizens Water Academy, uh, it brings people back in. And, um, and then I'll just say about the, the stove where we got out and walked around the site of the potential site a little bit. If you were to stand where the uh, River Constellation, the, the uh, artwork is, the globes, and look back at our building, uh, kind of to your left across the parking lot, kind of toward where the tunnel is, is kind of where we're looking at having some sort of a structure and we'll bring you some ideas about that here I think pretty soon. But if that structure were to take place, we were to raise money and get approval of this board to do it and that sort of thing, the educational boards that would be on that would be something that would change, uh, that we could, with, again, with the help of the Science Center, it could be something that we could change 
be the situation. You know, in a drought, you could have a drought type of uh, educational piece there or, or various things, and uh, that could be, to me, that's really the, I get more excited about that than I am the structure itself. So that was a lot more than I wanted to, but there's a lot going on there, and I think it's pretty great. So in, in the conversations that you have with the Botanical Garden, um, we had learned a couple months ago about we have one meter going in. Do you know if they have shared with Trellis so if we have added a second meter for that restaurant? I'll turn it over to say. We uh, have talked with the town for uh, They have not added a second meter or done anything different there. And I don't know how, how easy that's going to be, but the proposal that, that we have <laughs> drafted uh, ramps down the free water and over a fairly short period of time. And I think that once they recognize that they're going to be paying for Trellis's water too, they'll want to get that done. But that's not something that has been done yet. And I don't know if, do you know any how easy that will be if your folks had a chance to look at that or Laura? I, I, I don't know that they've had a chance to look at it, but um, I don't, it's certainly not insurmountable. I mean, I think that's done I think fairly routinely. A, we have a great business in there, and I think they have um, the majority of the catering business for the botanical gardens. So I just want to make sure Trellis is made aware of this too for their financial planning and not just that we're telling the botanical garden. Um, Jen, you've had most of our direct conversations with the folks at the VC. Do you know if they talked about that or showing the awareness that the Trellis is part of their water use? And no. We'll have to get that. I'll let it stand here, but I'll also. Okay. I just wouldn't want that surprise to come out on right. business as they're making plans and it's tough on all of the restaurants right now so but Jen have I misrepresented or uh, anything that needs to be corrected when I was talking about the educational discussions you've had over there no we did not no. she says no so let that go on the record um, <laughs> Des Moines Waterworks Park Foundation. Of course, we had that big item today. Is there anything else that Joel, Mike, anybody that would like to talk about the park? I'd have to defer to Mike. I was right. unable to attend. I'll just hit three quick things. The board over there is focused on the finishing campaign, still raising money to pay off the things that have been built, the forbearance agreements that we acted on today, and then uh, there's a event calendar attached. Uh, they're probably in a position where they have six to eight concerts this year. There's a lot of other events that are making use of the improvements out there. So there's a, there's some optimism uh, that something close to normal might be on the horizon out there. So I encourage you to take a look at the calendar. Uh, they've had one concert already, 5,000 folks, mm -hmm. a, a nice sized mm -hmm. event. So there's some momentum uh, to the north. So just out of curiosity, we all were impacted by the marathon or the Iron Man. So would the funding for the space that they used in Waterworks go to the foundation or does that come to Waterworks? You know, if they, um, anything that they did in the improved areas would go to the foundation. If it's outside the improved areas, then there'd be opportunity for the greater Waterworks. Okay. But they have um, access to any funds that are paid for activities in the improved areas. That's the key, the improved areas. Mm -hmm. So events for us out west, those are, that's our business, <laughs> not theirs. And Mike, what is, remind me, what's the, earlier there was a lot of work put into kind of, uh, when it came to concerts and events, the social distancing and pods, has that kind of been eliminated uh, with you know, recent developments, or where does that stand? I will say it's not uh, eliminated, it's just uh, relaxed. Okay. Uh, I think the messaging <laughs> of the last event uh, was simply uh, recommended the non vaccinated be masked. Left it at that. Thanks. And uh, uh, I'll say about the Park Foundation, referring back to the Stowe Memorial, in all of our discussion, all our planning, uh, the Park Foundation is involved. In attendance of those meetings and so it's not that we're going this is the way I think we all see it uh, Amy Beauty and Liam Stowe and everybody that's involved in the, um, uh, the Stowe Memorial planning is that 
it's part of the park. Uh, we may do our fundraising, and uh, but we will do the fundraising through the foundation. There will be a separate fund within the foundation housed over the grid from one community foundation for this. But it's our hope and, and uh, desire that this be part of the park planning. So it may be independent of their of their fund, you know, their individual fundraising, but they are involved, and I think fair to say very excited about the prospect of this. And the time becomes kind of right. I mean, they're doing some kind of cleanup fundraising, others, and then thinking about what's next. Maybe if we're successful, we can come in and raise a little bit of money and keep that momentum alive for the park. So along those same lines, I would ask you, Graham, since you are critical on all of these efforts to kind of look at that committee structure. Yep. See how Here's what's going to happen. That That's a good point. Um, Amy uh, and Liam and I have to put together a to-do list, if you will, for lack of a better term, what needs to be done. And part of that is uh, thinking about what we're getting, we're working on the country landscapes to kind of brainstorm on what the fiscal structure could be. Uh, and then from there, uh, kind of reformalize the committee, if you will, uh, to make sure that you know the Park Foundation is there, the uh, Renee Hardman from the uh, Science Center is at the table, there's proper representation for here, both staff wise and board wise, and it's reported back appropriately. Uh, so that none of us are surprised about, no, no, nobody on this board is surprised about where we are and what we're doing. Excellent. Thanks for all of that time. Um, external affairs. Jen, do you have a report for us? Can you hear me from here on it? Okay. You, the camera, camera can't. Here. The camera can't see. You didn't so want me to walk over. You there. have to go to the podium and do a full <laughs> song and dance. No dance. Now a little song and dance. No dance. Give me a song. <laughs> Thank you. It feels good to be back at Waterworks. I have 20 or 30 things to go over. <laughs> um, if you want to know, do, would you like to know a little bit more about the botanical garden proposal, or have we covered that enough? I don't know. You know, one thing I would offer Jen is that one of the things on Jennifer's to do list when she got back was to formalize what we were asking for from our education perspective. And she has done a great job of detailing what would be acceptable to us. And I think that if they agree that the, the ramp that we proposed, uh, that Grandma and I have worked on, is uh, worth it to get them to do the educational component. That has developed and shared with them. So um, I think at some point we'll want to bring that to the board as a whole package again in more detail. Yeah, there's some interesting development in West Lincoln that I don't know. Cool. There'll be way after everything. Just three or four things. Um, so, drought and microsystem in terms of strategic communication, I, I think you're going to discuss, Ted, that we have been including a drought along with possible microsystem outbreaks both in our mass media and all three of our social media platforms beginning a few months ago. So our strategy included preparing a public that drought conditions could likely necessitate using water wisely uh, in terms of lawn watering, plus the concept that water quality could collide with water quantity this summer. So those are complex sort of concepts, but we were hoping to meld those together to do some ground softening with the general public and our customers. And, um, so, we want to be sure the public understands the linkage between poor water quality from the farm chemicals that contribute to microsystem toxins in the Des Moines and low water levels in the raccoon in terms of our ability to meet demand. So I was talking with Ted today. I think we feel that our strategic communication strategies along those lines, plus the rain over the weekend, help drive down usage. So um, that was our consensus. Uh, last week, Ted did at least 12 interviews. Uh, it was a crazy week. Aspie was trying to kill me last week. Um, of course, he was, you know, stretched in as well. But um, we did local, state, and national media outlets. Um, we will be sharing our story with the New York Times on Thursday, this Thursday, um, in terms of drought and water quality. So our little PR and communications team is small but mighty, with Laura and Melissa helping out, and then um, we have someone named Megan McDowell helping with our social media. So we worked really well together last week, and it was a lot, but we made it through. So, um, The Citizen Water Academy, we've talked about the newly named William Stowe Citizen Water Academy. So 
In 2017, Bill came back from a trip to San Francisco and threw a brochure on my desk and strongly encouraged me to launch a Citizen Water Academy. So I laid the groundwork and then I went away. So Laura Sarcone really the, is the one that gave it wings and made it fly. So um, uh, we will uh, go forward. We decided last week with the eased COVID restrictions. So we're gonna go ahead as planned uh, under the William Stowe Citizen Water Academy name in honor of his vision. So we will proceed as usual, and the dates are going to be October 21st and 28th and November 4th and 11th with the typical formats. So we are really, I'm excited, Amy, um, Bill's family, Amy and Liam have been communicating with Laura and me today, and they have offered to work with us on a new branding concept for the Academy. So that's gonna be really cool. So we'll have a launch uh, strategy for that as well. And we'll probably open up registrations for that around August 1st. You're aware that we're undertaking a strategic planning process. HDR has been busily working behind the scenes, collecting data and responses from the public, from our senior management team and our community advisory group. We've had one community advisory group meeting. We have another one tomorrow. Uh, at the current time, we're reviewing just really advanced drafts of an initial mission statement, so that's exciting. Uh, we're on schedule to complete the process in September. And then lastly, a legislative update. Tomorrow, Ted and I are meeting with the Advocacy Strategies team. We're going to formulate our outreach in the next few months, a great time to catch legislators in the off season. So you know that, you're nodding your head. Um, so we're hoping to, to advance some of our ideas and concepts this summer with perhaps some uh, legislators who are up for talking with us about our water quality uh, priorities. I will be attending the Greater Des Moines Partnerships Annual of Washington, D.C. fly-in in September. Um, I'm actually uh, going a day early and we're scheduling meetings with various agencies and our congressional delegation about a variety of our concerns and issues during that visit. So that's my update for today. If anybody has any questions, I'll answer them. Thanks, Jen. Jen, regarding the uh, drought communications, I really like the message regarding um, brown is the new green. It may have any real um, impact uh, we're going to have to create a culture of con conservation, and I think that's been a really strong message, and it really hit home with me, and, you know, I like the idea of kind of taking pride in your, your brown lawn in times of drought when it's necessary. So I think that's been a really strong message, and kudos to you and the team for pushing that forward. Cool. That's a recycle. Where's Laura Saccone? I think that was John just Lentz. introduced in 2012, right? 2013, something like that? John Lenz came up with that concept. John Lenz? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we uh, recycled it and I think it works great. So, thank you for the feedback. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. That is all you. Just a couple of quick things from me. Um, I do want to mention uh, we, this is a negotiation year, a, a union contract negotiation year for the first time since 2013. You will be negotiating our, our union contract due to some changes in the law. Uh, the process will be a little bit different than it has been in the past, but um, we're, we're already starting to, to kind of work down that path. Um, because of the, the changes in the law, much of what would typically be in our, in our union contract uh, can no longer be negotiated. And so right now we are in the process of identifying the bits and pieces within the contract that um, cannot be negotiated and will have to come out. We're identifying the, the pieces that are what they call permissive. It's our intent to leave most of those in. We have the option that we're probably going to leave most, uh, if not all of that, in. And then there are very few things that are mandatory, like wages, which obviously will be in. So we're, um, we're working through redlining of that, and we're working towards uh, hopefully the week of July 19th having the opportunity to do our initial exchange of proposals with, with AFSC. And so um, because of the maturity of our contract and our relationship with the union, we expect this to be a, um, a pretty smooth process. We don't expect you know, hours and hours of, of negotiation meetings to be long into the night meetings like we at one time had. Um, so uh, expecting a pretty smooth sailing, and that's at least what we're hoping so that we will I'll um, start the process the week of July 19th, and Rock can very shortly after that have our contract negotiations complete. So that is the plan there. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about demand and drought. Um, 
think it was two weeks ago on Wednesday, Nathan, we pumped 89 million gallons of water uh, in the depths of the drought. That was a, a pretty amazing accomplishment for our team and, and our treatment plants. Um, Kyle's not here, but he sent me a note on one of those days. I think it was actually the Friday after that that he sent me the note that said, literally, we were maxing out the fluid drive plant. It has a capacity of 75 million gallons per day, design capacity, and we were pushing 75, 74 million gallons per day through the plant at that time, which is, you know, for water nerds like me, that kind of gives you goosebumps to see a plant just absolutely running as hard as it will. Good goosebumps or bad goosebumps? Good. It's, it's, it's kind of exciting. It's nerve wracking, but just to know that it can do it and it did it and the water quality was excellent and there were, thank goodness, no significant problems. But um, our other plants are somewhat restricted because of. Uh, low river levels and, and lack of source water. You know, the, uh, the Sailorville plant is a 10 mg plant and it's producing closer to five right now because we just don't have the raw water resources available from the river. The McMullen plant is a 25 mg plant that's producing more like 15. So, you know, the newer plants, they, they do a great job, they have great source water, but it's a drought, it was a serious drought and that was really impacting us at that time. That's what resulted in us in issuing stage one of our water shortage plan. Well, it's not that we couldn't make the water, it's that we didn't have the water to make. And so um, we had some questions today. Things have changed a little bit. Um, we, we, I believe, I'll let Nathan correct me if he thinks I'm wrong, but I believe we did see a small reduction um, when we, just when we asked, like a five million gallon per day reduction, maybe. Um, the, the weather obviously helped even more. Uh, and so um, we produced, 89 million gallons two weeks ago on Wednesday. On that Friday, we were headed for somewhere over 90, potentially even record pumpage. It rained a little bit. Um, what was the Sunday, Nathan, 56? Uh, this last Sunday was 56, yeah. 56, so 89 million to 56. So you can see the difference that rain makes. Temperature is important because we do have cooling going on in some of the larger buildings, but irrigation is clearly pretty significant. So uh, kudos to Nathan and, and Kyle and his team. I know Jenny and her team dealt with a number of main breaks during that high pumpage time. That's always the case. Um, every little change that we make when we're pumping at that high of flow and a higher pressure it tends to cause ripple effects and, and break things. Um, the rivers are still incredibly low. The rain is, is helpful because it reduces demand, but the Rackman River this morning I looked is still below 400 CFS, where normally it would be closer to 4,000 this time of year. So if it stays dry for a few days, we're going to be right back up in those ADMG pumpages. So we are staying at stage one of our water shortage plan. We're asking people to, to conserve. I'm really hopeful that we'll kind of get over the hump, but we're not out of the woods yet in terms of drought for this summer. And then lastly, I, I'll, I'll share a little bit about um, you know, Jen mentioned there was a lot of press primarily related to the drought and our issuance of stage one on Monday of last week. Uh, we did have a, a regional meeting, a drought meeting on Friday, of the week before, and we had 40 some participants in that. Um, Kyle did a great job of kind of presenting where we were. Um, we had great team effort there and then and we let them know that on Monday it was our intention to implement stage one and we did and that resulted in, in a lot of, of, of media and a lot of coverage and there was sort of a, a combination of water quality and water quantity. Um, when we decided some time ago that we were going to have a strategic communications plan, had no idea that it would be so handy um, in June of this year. Uh, and Melissa has done a great job, Melissa Walker has done a great job of putting that plan together. Uh, I just have to say, I, um, I don't know if you folks are all Instagram users or followers, but you should be, because they are doing such an amazing job of just finding really cool things about the Waterworks feature on a weekly basis. And it's in a lot of pictures and a lot of quick little explanations, and they've got this editorial calendar built for the whole year. This talks about all the social media press release and all these things we're going to do and then they, um, last week they did yeoman's work. It was stressful for a lot of people. You know, Nathan, Kyle, his team, Jenny, her team, but also the, the, the PR team. And they 
have been well prepared. Sometimes last minute well prepared, but you know, it all fell right in there. And all I had to do was talk. So uh, that's, that's the way it should be. Um, had the opportunity to do River to River and Iowa Press last week. Um, and thank you to the team for having me prepared and ready for that. It was far outside of my comfort zone, but I got through it all. So. And it occurs to me too, Ted, that maybe if people haven't met Melissa in person, maybe because not. she did come on, I think, during the pandemic. So yeah. Melissa, wave your hand there. She's you've probably seen her work. We're used she's to been, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's been doing great work. It's been long so. Is that just my mugshot up there? Yeah, I mean, usually. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's a real person. She's yeah. general. And uh, between she and, and Laura and Jen, amount of work on our PR. Uh, it just raised, elevated to a completely new level, things that we've never seen or done before. Um, and Amy is part of the review process of all of them, too, so thank you. So, you know, she's everywhere. Uh, she's literally everywhere. So this is going to conclude our first in-person meeting. I think it was poetic. It was raining when we came in today. Yeah. And as Joel pointed out, this is his only second meeting in person. <laughs> I think the last time I was here, maybe for a meeting, maybe for something else, it was pouring rain as well. So, so we should have Joel come yeah. in. Yeah, right. Unless it's a farm. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Then, then we won't have a coming. We won't be invited. Is there anything else for today's purposes? I think Sue has made a motion to adjourn. Sure. You know, before, <laughs> before we do that, I want to make sure everybody knows Rachel. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. That's true. That's true. I got to meet Rachel in person. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We're remiss. Rachel Brown is the new admin who uh, the office of the CEO is shown with HR. And because of the new magic we're doing with Zoom and in person, she's going to be joining Michelle for at least a period of time, maybe permanently. <laughs> However it works, uh, but she took Teresa's place. I don't even know if all of you got to meet Teresa. She started <laughs> during the pandemic and left. The pandemic. Um, but, uh, Welcome. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, all right. We have a motion to adjourn. Unless there's any opposition, I will say it's a unanimous vote. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.